In this video today, I'm going to walk you step by step how I took this badly damaged 27 contender console door hatch, grind out all the damage, reinforce it with some epoxy, reshape the outside, and take some white paint and make it look like it never happened. Stay tuned. What's up guys, Russ from Backyard Boatworks. So I'm at my shop today and I decided to do a short video on this here. This is a contender uh, hatch. This is a hatch that covers the front of the console. It, it flips open. So uh, it's a neighbor of mine actually. I've done a little bit of work on his boat, but um, he's got some cracking in the corner of this, this cover and we're gonna fix it and patch it up. He just did uh, sea deck decking all over the boat so we have to work around this um, this new sea deck um, so we're going to take some steps to make sure that we don't do anything to to get any paint or, or debris on that um, let me show you real quick what i'm dealing with and this is probably something that a lot of boat owners might uh, experience or might need to fix so hopefully uh, this little project might help you uh, fix something similar that you have on your boat all right so you can see the hatch here down on the bottom um, there's a really, let's see if I can get in close, there's a big crack in the outside of this. It's hard to see it, but there's a hairline crack right here. So this whole piece is, is very, it's, I mean, it's on there pretty good, but I mean, one good shot to this corner and this whole piece would probably break off. So fortunately, uh, we caught it before this broke off. So we're going to try to fix this. I can already tell that somebody has been in here before. Um, you can see here there's... There's some glass work here and it was probably reinforcing this hinge area and it looks like somebody was actually in here before trying to solve the same problem but um, I'm assuming they use some sort of thickened polyester filler because whatever this is right here it's very brittle. There's really no structure to this right here. It's hard to tell if there's even any glass in this but it's not doing much. I can see where there's uh, some filler here where they tried to blend in the repair and, and to strengthen this area you can see right here and a lot of the paint is peeling too. Um, I'm going to assume that this was painted with either all grip or all craft. All grip, all grip is a polyester uh, polyester urethane all craft is an acrylic urethane all craft is basically car paint single stage direct to gloss car paint so not very durable um, you can see the prep that they did on this wasn't very good and a lot of it is failing so I'm assuming you can see right here it's chipping on the side I'm assuming they painted over the old gel coat and it just didn't prep it good enough uh, but the game plan here is we're going to reinforce the back and I'm going to use epoxy products on this because clearly the repair last time, I don't know why this keeps cracking here. Um, maybe just from it shutting or maybe it just keeps getting hit. So we're going to repair this with epoxy, reinforce it on the back with some glass and then in the front, uh, I'm going to grind this all out here reinforce it with a little bit of glass and then come in with a reinforced epoxy filler and then I'm going to bring the repair maybe out to right about here and then I'm going to use some polysiloxane white to blend this in and I'll talk about why I'll use that later but man looking at some of the stuff that people do on boats you can see that this has uh, rivets to hold the hinge on but they used an angle grinder to cut the rivets out last time when they did it, which makes absolutely no sense because all you need to do is take a drill bit and drill the rivet out and it falls right apart, which is what I did. Use like a quarter inch drill bit, drilled the head out and the thing came out in like 30 seconds. But anyway, let's get started on this. All right, so I'm gonna move pretty fast through this prepping, grinding part, because um, nobody wants to see grinding and uh, digging, but just talk about a few things here. So this is my 3 8 inch Makita mini belt sander, and this tool I use a lot. This is comes in super handy, especially for something like this, where you need to remove material, but you need to be very, very delicate at the same time. 
Uh, so here you can see I'm using it on the outside and it's going to allow me to be very precise because again, we're working up against that C deck and you know I don't want to risk hitting it with a grinder or anything like that and plus you can see it allows me to control the depth and I can put a nice clean step um, between the old glass and that white there and that's where I'm going to lay my uh, chop strain mat to make the repair. So this is another tool that comes in handy as well. This is actually a Harbor Freight tool. I don't use this that much, but for this situation, it's really nice. It's got a fiberglass carbide grinding disc on it and it allowed me to get down into that 90 degree radius. The belt sander was just digging out too much material in that, um, that die grinder. Whoops, that's not good. So now we got to address that. I guess I was digging out a little bit too much material. But no big deal, just going to use some tape here just to kind of tape and hold it temporarily in place. And I'm going to use some 10 minute epoxy. This is a one to one super bond epoxy. And I just put a little bead of it down into the corner and then I used my heat gun to speed up the process in probably 15 minutes. It was solid enough to where it would hold itself up and then I could get these pieces of 1708 in place. And then once the glass is in place, no big deal. So here I'm using some one-to-one uh, -one laminating epoxy. I'm just mixing it up. And then I added a little bit of epoxy reducer to it as well because we're using 1708 here and you want the epoxy to be as thin as possible because um, it's hard to wet out 1708 with epoxy. That chop strand mat soaks up about 30% more resin than what you'll need. Um, so the reducer helps uh, make that a little bit easier all right let's slow down a bit and talk a little bit about what's going on here so i put about uh one two three four five pieces of 1708 biaxial and i used epoxy so you can use 1708 with epoxy because the chop strand mat is stitched to the back of the 1700 and um there's no binders in it to, to cause any issues. Um, if I had 1700, I probably would have used the 1700 because you don't really need the chop strand mat with the epoxy. Um, if you use 1708 with epoxy, it's just gonna hold more resin. It's gonna make it a lot harder to wet it out, but it's not gonna cause any problems. Um, the extra layers of chop strand mat in there just bulked up the laminate more. Um, which in this case worked out pretty good because I wanted to beef up this area here because um, it cracked and it broke. Um, that's why I ended up putting that extra little piece of glass um, at the end right along where that hinge used to be and where that piece dropped off. So once I grind this off, I'm sure it's going to be uh, a lot more substantial in that area. All right, so this is the next day and uh, the epoxy's all cured and man, it's super rock solid. So I uh, just wanted to touch real fast on what I'm gonna be doing here. So I've decided to use polyester with chop strand to fix this outside. I wanted to use epoxy, um, but it's Thursday and I'm a little behind on this project and the customer wants to use his boat this weekend. So polyester will allow me to finish this today. Um, so now I'm gonna clean this up and get ready to continue. All right, so this is a tool that I use rather often and it comes in really handy. It's a Milwaukee oscillating tool and it has a carbide edged um, tile, ceramic tile grout cleaning cutting um, blade disc. I'm not really sure, um, but it works really good for cutting fiberglass. They last a long, long time and I use it to trim molds uh, and things like that as well. All right, so now that I have the back all um, trimmed up and sanded down, now I need to kind of address this front here. So when that little piece broke off, it left a lot of loose kind of shards. And if you remember, I epoxied it on the inside, but I didn't put any epoxy on the outside. So I just came in, I didn't film it, but I used my belt sander um, to grind out any of the loose pieces that were on the outside. And you can see how the belt sander works really, really well to sand these areas and be very, very delicate because you know, I'm working right up against that C deck and I want to make a nice lip there in the back for the chop strand to fall into. So if I put the chop strand here and leave it a little proud of that, uh, of that white, then I can block sand it down and the repair would be pretty much 
fully done with glass. You want to try to avoid using filler, especially in this area, because the more filler you put on it, if it gets hit again, the filler is just going to crack. So I always try to do my repairs with 100% glass. All right, so this is something that I have on my bench that I custom mixed myself. This is polyester resin with silica and milled fibers. So the milled fibers are more like chopped strand, but super, super, super fine milled. Like you can't even really barely see it. So the milled fibers will give this resin um, a lot more strength, compression strength, impact strength. And I'm going to use it here to fill in where those little uh, recesses were, where I ground out the loose fiberglass. And then I cut some strips of a one and a half ounce chop strand mat and I just make it kind of small here and manageable and I'm just going to cut little pieces here to fit over this area and we're going to use some polyester resin to put them in place. All right, so once that resin kicked off for about 15 minutes, I just brushed on some PVA, polyvinyl alcohol, and that's gonna seal the surface from the air and it's gonna make the resin uh, fully cure so that I can sand it and it's not going to gum up my sandpaper. So once that sat for maybe 30, 40 minutes, the resin was fully cured and I just washed off the PVA with water. All right, so the next step here is to just kind of roughly scuff uh, the area where I'm going to blend um, that old um, all grip uh, with the new paint. And I'm, now I'm just going to tidy up my taping. Um, I use the air gun there to blow out any of the water that was might have gotten underneath that C deck because I don't want that water to shoot out when I'm uh, doing the paint. Um, so here I'm just using a little bit of lightweight filler just to fill in any of the little pinholes that's in the resin and then I'm just going to wet sand that out and smooth it out before I move on to the paint. All right, so I want to slow down a little bit and I want to talk about this paint that I'm about to use. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail. I'm going to make a video about this paint soon, but this is polysiloxane and it's basically an epoxy polyurethane hybrid paint. So it mixes like epoxy, but it has the gloss of polyurethane, but the adhesion of epoxy. Uh, it's really hard for me to go into detail about this paint. I'm going to make a video about it in the future. But the reason I decided to use this paint is because I had multiple layers of chipping, failing um, all grip over the top of a uh, gel coat that wasn't properly prepared. And this is a 90% solids paint. And what that means is that 
When you put a layer down of, say, all grip, all craft, something like that, that's about a 45% solid paint. So when you put it down, more than half of it evaporates and it leaves you with a very thin film. So this is a 90% solids paint. So when you put down a coat, it covers really well, but it retains pretty much all of the mill thickness and it doesn't evaporate. So that's going to allow me to build up a little bit of an edge where this paint will meet the old paint. And because it has the adhesion properties of epoxy, I can feather edge out this paint and blend it gradually into the old paint perfectly. And then I can just come back and wet sand it and buff it out and you're you'll barely be able to see where this paint blends into that all grip. Um, there's a lot of advantage to, the, to this paint. Um, and it's very flexible. It has no isocyanates, uh, which are very bad for your health. So this paint is really, really good to use for a lot of boat applications. And I'm going to be using it quite a bit um, on my 37 foot Silverton boat. And I'm going to go into more details about why I use this paint um, as much as I do. I've used this in my bilge in my engine room. I've used it to paint my engine transmission. I've painted the engine block and it hasn't uh, colored from the heat. Um, it's a very, very versatile paint and it should be used more in the marine industry. And maybe I can uh, make that happen. So here I put a little bit in my gun and I just lightly misted it on. So you can see this is like one, one and a half coats and it builds really nice. It has awesome gloss. And here is after it cured, um, this was the next day. I let it cure overnight and now I took the tape off and I'm going to start wet sanding it. So I left a little, uh, little ledge there where you can see, you can see a little dark line where the tape was where the um, polysiloxane blended into the all grip. So now I'm just going to wet sand that all out. You can see a little high spot there from the tape. No big deal. Um, just going to blend that polysiloxane out and feather edge it. So you really won't be able to see that transition between the new and the old paint. So I'm just using 1200 grit on some of those high spots um, where those ridges were and 1500 grit uh, on the other uh, on the other spots. I didn't want to go too aggressive with the sandpaper because um, I didn't have any um, wool buffing pads for my three inch buffer and I didn't want it to leave any sand scratch marks. So I tried to stay with the highest um, grit sandpaper that I have. And here I'm just going to hit it with some uh, polishing compound on my black foam polishing wheel and because the paint is brand new um, it just cured pretty much overnight the paint is still pretty soft so it wet sands out nice and it buffs out really nice so you see here I'm just gonna go over it a little bit and the shine comes right out and blends the edges together and you will barely be able to see it So that's it, came out really good. There's a little bit of orange peel there. I could have got crazy with it and wet sanded it all out, but uh, keep in mind we're under some LED lights here and any of those imperfections are gonna stick out like crazy. But once I mounted this on the boat, you could not see it at all. I would challenge anybody to walk on that boat and be able to tell that this was repaired. Hope you guys learned something. If you have any comments, questions, leave them in the comments below.